there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're at the Hacienda Cuisine in San Paulo del Lago, kind of by where the Atavalo market is outside of Quito. And today what we have for you are what you should know before you come to Ecuador, because this is really a great place to visit. It's super affordable to visit here. The people are super nice. There's all kinds of amazing biodiversity from the Galapagos Islands to the Andes Mountains to the Amazon, all kinds of cool stuff. And so what we want to do is kind of prepare tourists for when they come here to Ecuador. So you know, you know, what are the plugs like? Is it safe? you know what are the apart what are the hotels like you know what am I gonna eat when I'm there we're gonna give you a lot of this kind of basic stuff to help you be better prepared and to start off you probably want to know mark what are the highlights when I'm gonna come here because I know there's the Galapagos Islands that's in Ecuador but but what else should I see when I'm here? Look, yes, the Galapagos are really cool, and I have a whole thing about those, but realize the Galapagos Islands are extremely expensive to visit. So what you might want to look at doing is actually doing more of the um, Ecuador mainland, because there's a lot of really cool stuff to see. And there's kind of three different regions when you're looking at coming to Ecuador. You have the Oriente, which is where the Amazon rainforest basin is. You can see that. Uh, you have the Andes Mountains, like where Quito and Cuenca is, or are, and that's really cool. And then you have the coastal regions you can go visit. And there's lots of tons of cool different things you can see you know if you want the UNESCO World Heritage Sites culture kind of things the down the historic center of Quito is amazing Cuenca is amazing for that if you want to go have fun like look man I'm going to South America I want adventure tourism go to Banos you, you can do your, your bungee jumping all your adventure tourism stuff you want to hit the beach Montañita is a nice little beach town you can go to with a lot of tourist visits there's all kinds of great stuff and you're gonna have a lot of outdoor activities when you are here and what's cool is when you're up here in the mountains like this you have all kinds of volcanoes and craters you can go visit you know there's rainforest obviously but also there's cloud forests you can visit there's all kinds of really cool stuff but really it is it's more of environmental bio vacation eco tours and vacation when you do come here to Ecuador now the main question I actually got when we were coming to Ecuador from a lot of people was Mark are you sure Ecuador is safe Look, we've been here for a while. We've talked to other travelers that have been here. We've talked to guides, we've talked to people. Yes, Ecuador is safe. You can come here and have a good time and not be worried all the time that something's bad is going to happen to you. And the thing is, when you come here, there are some safety things you should worry about. The biggest one is actually the sun. Going to Quito or going to Cuenca or you're gonna be Banos and things like that. What you have to realize is you're really high up and those UV rays are very intense, especially when you're that high up. But especially when you're on the equator, it's extremely strong, so you need to make sure you're wearing sunblock all the time long sleeve shirts if you're gonna be going out make sure you have a hat things like that because honestly the Sun it, I mean you'll get burned even with your sunblock on so make sure you keep reapplying because that's gonna be a really dangerous thing so that's actually your biggest safety concern is probably the Sun next thing is no this isn't really one you have to worry about if you're going to the Galapagos or the coast but actually altitude sickness if you're going to Quito Quito's like 9,000 feet so you notice I'm like Whew, breathing hard. It's not just because I'm fat, okay? It's actually because the air is thinner up here. And if you get up here and you're flying to Quito that first day, take it easy because it will be tougher for your body to adjust. So it takes longer for your belly to digest food. Um, it sometimes it's a little bit tougher to breathe. If you have high blood pressure, you want to be careful because you stay too long in high, high altitudes. It's not always good for you. So do be careful with that. So take it easy. Stay hydrated when you are here, when you are, you know, getting these highland areas and stuff like that. And I guess what I'll add with that one is a safety concern is don't don't drink the tap water okay don't drink the tap water and you'll see is when you're here like we're at Hacienda Cuisine in, in San Paulo de Lago and they have bottles of water for us there and you go some hotels we've been to they've had the big huge jug you can fill up and they'll tell you don't don't drink the tap water anywhere in Ecuador, okay? So that's another safety concern. Another safety concern I would say when you are here is, is driving. Don't drive in Ecuador, just telling you that one. But what I'll say is when you're a pedestrian, don't expect people to stop and wait for you when you're trying to cross the street and stuff like that. You always have to pay attention, all right? And then you just have general safety things you should always be paying attention to. If you are driving around here, make sure you're taking your bags in at night. Don't leave any valuables, you know, showing things like that. Also, if you're gonna be taking public transportation, you know, taking the bus around town or taking long buses make sure you're paying attention to your stuff because you might want to look out for pickpockets and things like that but I mean does that sound any different than if you're going to Rome or Chicago no so you want to think about those things when you are here so the next thing I want to talk about is actually the money and what's funny is actually here you, you in, in Ecuador you use the US dollar okay you have you know your your dollar bills your five dollar bills your ten dollar bills your twenty dollar bills you're gonna use those and because that is the official currency of Ecuador is the US dollar so when you come here you'll see your five dollar bills and your your one dollar bills and maybe even a 20 every so often so make sure you bring cash when you come here and it needs to be US dollars okay because that's what they use here uh, when you get change back the bills you get US bills the coins will be a 
combination of US coins and Ecuadorian coins. So they'll have their own versions of them, but they'll be the same size as like, you know, the 20, uh, a quarter, they'll have the same for the 25 cent thing. It'll be the same size, but it'll be a little different in terms of what's on the front and back of it. So it is kind of funny when you are here. Now, some people are like, well, Mark, who cares about cash? You know, I, I like to pay with credit card all the time. Well, credit card here is not always accepted. Now, in Quito and Cuenca, when you're going to like tourist places and restaurants, they'll take your credit cards in nicer hotels. It's no, no big deal. But you want to carry cash with you because that's how you pay for a lot of stuff. And what's cool is this place is super cheap. Like you can have a good lunch for like $3. And the thing is, if you're going to be paying with for food or you're going to be paying with things, you can't pay with a $50 bill or a $100 bill. In some places, you can't pay with a $20 bill. So before you come, get a bunch of singles and $5 bills and $10 bills. That's gonna make it a lot easier when you are here. I know I went to the bank the day before we came. I took $300 and said, look, give this to me in fives and ones. All right, now, yeah, of course, I had a stack like this high, which makes me feel really rich, but it was only 300 bucks because you will be paying with dollars and stuff like that, it makes things a lot easier, okay? Now, in terms of the ATMs, there are ATMs in the major cities and, and there are gonna be a banks and stuff like that, but if you're gonna go into the Amazon or any of the rural areas, don't expect to find an ATM there, so make sure you have the cash with you before you go. If you're coming from other countries that don't, use the, don't have US dollars and stuff like that, it's not always easy to find a place that will exchange money, so try to get your dollars before you come here. Now the thing is, is you get all this cash and stuff like that, you're like, Mark, uh, uh, how do I get more cash if I run out? Look, like I said, this place is extremely affordable when you are here. We're staying at really nice hotels and, and nice haciendas and stuff like that. Usually about 60 to $80 a night for like a really nice place. If you're gonna be going and staying at hostels and stuff like that, it's a lot, lot cheaper when you are here. But there is one thing. There's one thing that is not cheap when it comes to coming to Ecuador, and that is going to the Galapagos Islands, okay? So here's my little tips for you about going to the Galapagos. Be prepared to spend thousands of dollars per person. Look, there's two ways you can kind of visit the Galapagos Islands. One, you can take a cruise, and that's the most popular way you know, to do these kind of things. Or two, you can do a land-based visit when you go there. It doesn't matter which one you do, you're gonna be spending a thousand bucks for, or, you know, or two thousand or three thousand dollars per person to do that. We're actually not even going to Galapagos on this trip because I couldn't justify spending $12,000 to take the kids and, and Jocelyn and I to the Galapagos for five days. It can be extremely expensive to get to Galapagos. That's why we're focusing on the mainland because there's so much great biodiversity here in the mainland. But of course, Galapagos are world famous. You know, Darwin wasn't the only one that went wow when he was there. But when you go there, realize you're gonna spend a lot. And the thing is, you might find cheaper cruises or cheaper land-based tours. I will tell you right now, the Galapagos tours, you get what you pay for. So save up the money and go and spend the money to get the better tour when you are there. Now, some things you should know is basically split the year in the middle, you know, from January to June and then July to December, you kind of have two different currents that go through there. And the warm current versus the cold current will have a big effect on the biodiversity in the water that you see when you are there. Uh, so do have a heads up for that. Make sure you're checking out which you want to see. Uh, the sea lions, they're there all the time. They like walk around like stray dogs when you are there. So that is kind of a cool thing. But just know you are going to spend a lot going to Galapagos, but it is a once in a lifetime opportunity and it really is worth the money. The more I've talked to people, I'm like, man, I wish I, I, wish I had $10,000 to take the four of us there, but we don't. Okay. So I want to make sure you're ready for that. So if you're preparing for your Ecuador trip, Make sure you think about that, okay? If you're gonna put Galapagos in or not. And if you don't put Galapagos in, it's okay because there's so many great things to see here in Ecuador that you'll miss it. But you know what? Maybe when you can save up the money, you can go back later. Another thing I'd like to mention though, is if you're looking at doing either a cruise or a land-based uh, a visit to the Galapagos Islands, kind of think of it this way. The land-based ones, you tend to help support more of the local community. Whereas you do a cruise line, you're paying it to a cruise line that some are based here in Ecuador, some aren't. So that might be something you want to think about when you're looking at going to the Galapagos Islands. Now, another thing I want to talk about is, look, you're going to take tons of pictures when you are here, whether it's seeing the volcanoes or, or going to the Vital del Mundo and getting your picture holding up the, the, the earth on the equator or when you're trying to balance the eggs or, or the sea lions and the Galapagos, you're gonna take lots of pictures. And you might gonna think is, uh-oh, well, how am I gonna charge my stuff? Well, the plugs here actually are US plugs. Okay, the two flat ones like this. Now in the US, you know, we have the two flat and there's a little hole in the bottom. You don't always have the three plug US ones. You usually only have the two little flat slots. So make sure you have a plug that can adapt to that. The voltage here is 110, so it's a little bit less than the US. So you can just plug, I mean, we're just plugging our iPads and our phones directly into the wall. It takes them a little bit longer to charge, but 
we've had no problems that way. Another thing people like to ask is, what about the Wi-Fi? Do they have internet in, in Ecuador? Yes, they have internet in Ecuador. The internet's everywhere. They have it on the International Space Station, okay? So they do have internet here. We've actually had our, you know, the, the 4G connections on our phone. We have that, you know, I have three bars in 4G right now. One thing I will say though is, when you go to hotels and places, they might not have uh, internet in every one of the rooms. You might have to go to a central area, which is kind of normal sometimes, but we've had internet in all of our rooms we've been to. Though I will say, the Wi-Fi has been a bit slow. <laughs> like, it's like this, I can do my work emails, I can check out websites and stuff like that, no problem. But if you're like, have kids, and you think, oh, we'll just put on Netflix or stream a YouTube video for them, that might be a bit slow or might not work. So just, just a heads up for that one, especially the more rural areas you go, just like anywhere in the world, just have a heads up for that. But in general, I haven't had a problem. And actually, I've had a better Wi-Fi or better internet connection when I've used the 4G on my phone versus I have with a lot of the Wi-Fi hotspots and stuff. Another thing is if you're a traveler and you think, well, I'm just gonna go stop in the internet cafe, there are some but they're nowhere near what they were a few years ago. I mean, anywhere in the world, you've noticed they've kind of disappeared. Here, it's kind of the same thing. So you might want to look for a, a telephone spot. They might have an internet cafe, or sometimes the hotels will have a computer you can use. But honestly, you have your phone or your device so you can connect to Wi-Fi and you'll be okay. Now, the next thing people might want to know is, how am I going to get around Ecuador? Well, there's two ways you're going to get around. One, you're going to take buses, like most people do, or you can actually take some inland flights, okay? Those are your two big options. Now, the inland flights are really great. They're not super expensive either, so you can do those. You know, it's about 30 minutes to fly from Quito to Cuenca, whereas if you have your own car and no traffic, it's about six or seven hours to get there. Um, if you take a bus, it's quite a bit longer. So there are those things. You might want to look at the price for the flights inland instead of, like, wasting a day in a bus. It might just be easier to fly to some of these places because the prices, we didn't think were that bad on those. There's like three airlines you might want to choose from. We're flying with a lot of time and it was, it was fine. So we have no problems with that. In terms of the buses, <laughs> if you're in Quito, make sure you get the right bus station where you want to go. But when you're taking buses, you know, a bus is a bus, okay? When you're going to go there, probably your big backpack is going to go underneath the bus. So you have that. Keep your other bag with you. Like, oh, it's, it's kind of like when you're on a plane. Everything you keep in your carry-on, keep that in you with you, you know, in the bus. Do be careful on the buses when you are there, the, the tr public transportation, just like anywhere in the world, that's where, you know, it's easy to pickpocket and get people on those kind of stops. So just have a heads up for that. But honestly, you take the buses around, they're not too bad. It's just sometimes it takes a while to get places. So just have patience. And that's one of the things, when you come here to Ecuador, have patience with things, with the people waiting for your food or your drinks or on your transport, just have patience, calm, just relax. It's, it's, they're nice. It's really fine. And I think that's one thing I should talk about is actually the people here. The people here are super friendly and they are super nice and they will help you. But one thing you should know is you need to speak some Spanish. Okay. Now the guides here, like tourism is becoming really big here in Ecuador. And so there's a lot of guides that speak good English and you're going to the sites, they'll have an English guide you can ask. They might have to go get them, but they'll go and show you around. But honestly, to really enjoy Ecuador, you need to speak some Spanish so you can talk to the locals, translate the menus, things like that. So so that is a, one of the big things with the people here, but they are super friendly. So it's not really a problem because they'll still help you out. Like they'll do the hand signals and stuff just like you would do. So that is really cool. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is actually the toilets. Look, you need to know is when you come here to Ecuador, you need to put your toilet paper and your tampons and all these kind of things. They do not go down the toilet. They go in the basket, the trash can that's next to the toilet. And I know a lot of people go, oh, gross, I wipe my butt and put that in there. Yes, you do. And that's why when you see the ladies that come clean your room, you better be nice to them and leave them a little tip or something like that because they are literally cleaning up your poop, all right? Now, the thing is, if you do put toilet paper down, it might not be able to suck it down. It could get clogged very easily because it doesn't have the pressure very well when you are here. So just have a heads up and the pipes might not be able to take it. So remember, toilet paper goes in the basket, okay? And since I am here at a Hacienda, I probably should mention accommodation here in Ecuador. Like I said, accommodation is super cheap when you are here. You can stay at nice places for a good price. And there are a lot of different options. There's hotels in all the cities. They have the usual amenities. You know, you got your, your bed and you know, maybe there's internet and you got your bathroom and stuff like that. Um, you'll notice that the, the hotels will give you bottled water or they might have jugs of water that are out that you can use. Use that to brush your teeth, you know, to drink, you know, for, to, from things because you don't drink the tap water even the hotels, okay? So have a heads up for that. So that's a nice thing they have for you. Another thing the hotels will do is they'll call taxis for you because getting around the city, sometimes it's just easier to take a taxi places, but you want to make sure you get a legitimate taxi. So having your hotel call is a lot easier. They can set it up than you know what's there. So just have a heads up for that. And what's funny is in the taxis, you actually see there'll be like a little camera and a, like an emergency button and stuff like that because there were issues with taxis, you know, ripping off tourists and people. So do be careful. That's what another safety thing I should add is make sure you call official taxis. During the day, usually okay, but at night, definitely have your hotel call for 
for you or the restaurant you're at. It's no big deal. They'll gladly do it for you. Remember, the people are super nice. One of the things I will recommend, if you can stay at a hacienda, which is, you know, kind of like a, the, the, the old farmlands, whether it's the banana fields or the coca fields and stuff like that, they're like the huge house kind of stuff that's a huge complex. If you can stay at one of those, it is a really great experience. Now, the thing is, though, since they're out where the farms were and stuff like that they're not in the city so it's not in Quito you're outside of that but if you can stay in some of these haciendas it is really well worth it because you have so much space and fresh air and it's just really really nice so do try to stay in those now for more budget conscious travelers there are hostels when you are here and if you're going to be you know in Banos and doing the adventure tourism or in Quito and stuff like that there's plenty of hostels in those locations if you're going to other parts of the country more rural areas it might just be a hotel things like that it's a little bit harder to find hostels but the prices it's no big deal but if you are budget conscious and you have like two of you traveling around or three it's actually probably cheaper to actually go get a, a hotel than it is to get two or three people in a hostel so just a heads up for that one another thing to think about is actually the weather when you come here you know i've read online all these different things that ecuador is eternally spring so it's like ah mid 60s and occasional rain all the time yes in the mountains that's that way on the coast and the galapagos can get very hot and again remember the sun is your big issue when it comes to the weather so if you do come and you're going to be in the mountain areas make sure you have layers so you can throw a sweatshirt on when it gets chilly at night or long sleeve t-shirts just to protect yourself from the sun hats things like that it can make a difference and have a jacket or an umbrella because even though it says it won't rain it will rain and when it says it will rain it will rain but it'll be like sporadic and stuff like that so have a heads up for that one now the last thing i want to talk about is actually the food here and look when you come here you have to realize you're gonna have a lot of banana based things you're gonna have a lot of potato based things you're gonna have a lot of corn based things so yes sometimes you might have popcorn as a side dish okay there is a lot of different foods when you are here the empanadas are great for like street foods and snacks but when you sit down and eat there's a lot of stews that are here there's a lot of soups that are here locro which is like a cheese potato soup is actually my favorite thing I've had here you'll have that you might have a uh, seco which is more of a stew which I kind of look at it as secos like seco the, the chivo I think is how they say it it's like a lamb stew or a goat stew depends how they translate it and basically it's like the meat and then they pour it and there's like rice next to it and stuff like that you'll have those things but if you want like churrasco if you want a, a steak with some fries and rice they'll have that there too with eggs on top though that's really good uh, yes you will see cuy which is guinea pig and you'll see the guinea pigs roasting on a spit Yep, you can have that when you are here. That is a traditional thing in the mountains. But the thing is, you have also have a lot of fish when you are here from the coast up into the mountains. Ceviche is really good here. We had red snapper, which last night, oh my God, it was really good. You're gonna have all kinds of really good fish when you are here. Now for my liquor drinking friends, there's canelazo, which is, I know I'm saying it like a little bit off, but it's basically like a, a cinnamony hot liquor. You'll have like in a cup, it's like, oh, if it's cold outside, it's a nice thing to warm up with. They have two main beers here. You have Club and Pilsner. Those are kind of like your, your Budweiser, you drink with your buddy's beer. But actually in certain parts, there's actually a lot of uh, microbrews that have popped up. So you can get like artisanal beer when you are here, as they'll call it. So you do have that. And when you are going to the restaurants and you're going out to eat, one thing you might see is it'll say on the menu, I'll say look there's a 12% tax that's put on there and a 10% service charges on there so a lot of times service is already included but if they did a good job tip them out of five or ten percent it's no big deal I mean the food is really cheap here you're not going to be out anything so do give them a little bit of uh, money on the sign that's always nice if you're in the smaller mom and pop places they might not put that 10% tip already on there. It might not be included. So just have a heads up for that one. And in terms of tipping, one thing I'd say is you're probably going to do some guided tours when you are here. Don't forget to tip your guides when you do go. It depends on like a half day or a full day trip. If they're spending the night with you, things like that, you know, that'll based on how you do tip. That's why you always carry the bills around. So you know what to, you know, so you can tip people here and there just to make things a little bit easier for yourself. Anyway, I hope this helped you know a little bit more about visiting Ecuador before you come because you should come. And believe me, there's a lot more to Ecuador than the Galapagos. So the Galapagos are awesome. And I know we need to get there and we want to see that because I've seen so many great things. But again, with those prices, I can't afford to take four of us there. Anyway, you have a great time here in Ecuador. If you want to learn more, five things you love and hate about visiting Ecuador, the don'ts of visiting Ecuador, the shocks of visiting Ecuador, the don'ts of Quito, things like that, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your like subscriptions. And if you like travel videos like this, we put out new ones every Wednesday and Saturday. So I'll say adios from Ecuador.